there, welcome back to my channel. I'm shouting because I'm not sure how good the microphone is in the phone without a mic attached to my shirt. Sincerely apologize if it's too loud. I'm heading south from Birmingham, Solihull, Birmingham, to Southampton, Portsmouth area. I'm doing it the old fashioned method because I'm old fashioned and I prefer the MacBook and a mental root card than Mr. Satnav or Mrs. telling me turn right at the next junction. Take the second left at the roundabout. Not the not that keen on that kind of method of driving. So I used the old route card. Right, I'll need the M40. Up to the roundabout. At the roundabout, take the first exit onto the M40. There you go, there's my sat nav. Moi. I am my sat nav. Leamington, Stratford, and Banbury. Rorick Castle. M40. Right, I'm at the roundabout now. Uh, I can see my exit. Whoa! Really? It looks like I want to go down there. That's misleading. But if I'm unsure, the South Banbury, right? Oh, okay, Doug. That sign shouldn't be there. Good Lord. That would force people down that road. M40 North, M40 South, 140 yards. <laughs> right. I'm just coming off the slip road onto the M40, motorway 40, heading south. And I want to pick up the A34, which is about, I think it's about 40 miles this way. Then I'm going to turn right and head south onto the A34. And then later get on to the M3. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. I put down little words. How wonderful life is when you're Yes, that was me. Hey, come on. We all do it, yeah? Everyone sings. There's no music on the radio. Just sport because it's Sunday. Hi, so I've taken my jacket off. Stopped to do that. Wasn't foolish and did it on the drive. I'm now on the A34 just past Oxford a few minutes ago still heading south on the A34 towards the M3 I'm about 67 miles from Southampton once I get near that area I will turn left and head towards Portsmouth on the M27. Just passing Dalton Barracks. All military barracks, camps, garrisons in the UK are signpost. Clearly signpost in red and white signs telling you how to get to them. <laughs> Isn't that great for security? How did we find them? Well, just follow the signs. 
<laughs> Literally. Some of the comments I've heard during my travels uh, from north to south, from other people, friends and family and strangers about China. They still believe that most Chinese, if not all Chinese, eat dog. I had to explain to them that uh, most Chinese, or many Chinese, have dogs as pets and would never eat dog. Or maybe they have tried it when they was younger because their parents or grandparents encouraged them to. But um, yeah, English tend to think that uh, Chinese all eat dog and have no sympathy towards any animals. Yeah, but still, that's the media they push that. Everything that happened in Hong Kong a few years ago with those riots, those students and those riots. They believed the whole of China had that same attitude, that same opinion as the students um, in Hong Kong. And the government stamped it down very hard and said, no, you won't do this. They tend to think that Hong Kong is now a part of mainland China, and in some ways it is, we know that. Two countries, two rules, or one country, two rules. Um, yeah, Westerners can't seem to dis distinguish Hong Kong and mainland China whatsoever. So if, you know, they often, some told me that, uh, yeah, I've been to China and they went to Hong Kong. Yeah, um, they love gambling. Oh, and this kind of attitude where the gambling is done, as we know, in Macau. Oh, the lighting is bad. I'm going to have to change this camera angle. Ah, after I sneeze. One more. They always come in twos. Ah! Hey, ah! There we go. These glasses are great for the sun. Absolutely useless for the headaches. Press on the bridge of the nose, give me a headache just here at the temple. Ah! I'm gonna sneeze again, excuse me. Ah! Can't see! Crash! Oh, that was lucky. Wow, nice. Audi A5 looks good. Oh, I've got an Audi something A4 right behind me. It's just seen me look in the window in the mirror and encouraged me to drive faster, but I'm not going to. If he doesn't want to come off at the next service station in 300 meters, 300 yards, and I don't know what he's doing but that close to me. Oh, he's not coming off. There's the services, mate. Oh, he is coming off. And a little hand sign. <laughs> I guess he said hi, safe journey. There's a YouTube channel called Jio Nation. He's doing a van life now, I think, van life. He's traveling around America in a van. Strangely enough, I've never met the guy. I did Everest Base Camp in 2019. I think he did Everest. He tried to peak it. Um, but I think he did that also uh, maybe 2019, 18, I'm not sure. I don't think it could have been 220, don't know. He's now driving a van around or across America, which I did um, in 2004, 2005, and a bit of 2003. So he's doing what I've done, but in reverse order. It's quite interesting to watch. He, the other. He recently went to a place called Flagstaff. Now in the big scope of America, I was at a place called Prescott in Arizona and drove past Flagstaff several times. I know it quite well. It was quite small then as well, in the uh, early 2000s. 
but now it's certainly grown. Yeah, I drove, um, you know, from Las Vegas, a little bit of California, um, Los Angeles uh, to Las Vegas, and um, all the way across to Texas. I drove across America initially. I wanted to visit the cities, towns, that were within songs. Their names were mentioned in songs and I thought, yeah, I want to see what these places are like. So um, the first one I went to was Galveston, obviously, the Glen Campbell version. Galveston, oh Galveston, why do I hear a calling? <laughs> and that's why Glen made it to the top and I never made it anywhere. Galveston. Anyway, and so I visited uh, loads of other cities where that Indiana wants me, but I can't go back there. That's what I did. I visited cities that had uh, names, their names in songs. Yeah. Just over a year I did that. As well as getting my pilot's license from Prescott, uh, a flying school in, in Arizona. So yeah, it was a, it was one of those times in your, in your life where I'd recently got divorced, separated and divorced, and um, my daughters lived with their mother up the up the north of England, Newcastle area. And I decided to sell up, pack up, and go. So I thought I went to uh, to America. So within days of deciding, yeah, I'm going to go there, initially to purchase a house in a place called Corpus Christi, way down south in uh, Texas. I literally jumped on a plane and flew there. And then the stewardess came round with the visa notices, uh, pieces of paper to fill in, and I never had one. There was a large contingency of golfers. Oh my God, listen to these. want to get one of those bikes not one of those styles but I want to get a bike I digress so I went to a place called Corpus Christi oh sorry before I got off the plane the stewardess came round you know with the uh, the forms to fill in I never had anything to indicate that I had a visa so I filled out the form the larger contingency of golfers was on the plane and I asked them <coughs> where we're staying because I had no address to go to. And um, yeah, just filled out the forms as if I was one of the golfers and they let me through. When I got off the plane, smooth, sweet as a whistle. Then called a greyhound. to Galveston and then called another one the next day to Corpus Christi great didn't like Corpus Christi I stayed there for about five days a couple of strange things happened one of the motels I stayed in <laughs> little shutter what do you want I'd like a room please when now wait so I waited a while then she gave me the key I gave her the money I went to the apartment that I was staying in the room whatever it's called and um, the lock was broken no key was required the door just pushed open and after a quick inspection in this one room apartment um, 
well why not one room it is a hotel motel pulling back the sheets there were blood stains and I don't mean from a a woman's period I mean you know sort of like serious blood stains over the sheets I asked for another room or if the bedding could be changed they changed it the bedding about three to four hours later I slept that night with a chair against the door because it wouldn't lock <laughs> quite a strange situation to be in two days later I didn't stay there for, I stayed there for one night I wanted to see a bit of history I went shopping and I, and I bought this blanket it was like a Mexican blanket it was beautiful I hadn't seen one before, just in movies like a poncho, you know, the Clint Eastwood style. So I got this, they give it to me in a paper bag, brown paper bag. I'm walking back to where I was staying. <laughs> Heavy rains came down, the paper bag burst, split open. So I put this poncho over me, I was a little lost. I asked a, a driver who stopped at some traffic lights um, where you know to give me directions <laughs> the driver thought I was gonna mug him with this poncho over me I looked a bit strange I guess he drove off he jumped a light to get away from me yeah a couple of things like that anyway later I jumped on a Greyhound and went to um, went to uh, Arizona and whilst I was there my flying instructor and his wife were really really good I learned, fly, learned to fly um, they helped me open a bank account a Wells Fargo bank account um, I had a fixed address which I didn't I was living in a van I bought a Dodge Ram 250 beautiful van the back doors didn't lock the lock was busted I had that van for almost two years. I even flew back to England at one point and left the van in a car park. When I returned several months later, the van was still there. Rather dirty from acid rain and other things. No one had opened the back doors and it still had its four wheels. Totally surprised. Hmm. That was just in a car park near a museum. Maybe they thought my van was a part one of the items from the museum yeah some good stories I really enjoyed it I very much doubt it but there was a, a, a chap called Tony uh, Tony Van Dees not Van Diesel Tony Van Dees really nice guy worked in a motel in uh, Galveston and I went to Galveston three times during those that two-year period I really liked it lovely Long Beach really Long Beach um, yeah one evening I came back in my van parked up at the uh, at the motel in Galveston there was a large marquee tent on the beach. Curious as I am, I went down to the beach to look into this marquee. I couldn't see anything. I could hear some really, really good music. Saw silhouettes and shadows, people dancing. I managed to look over one particular part of the, uh, the fence work, the temporary fence work. And I saw guys talking, you know, it hadn't crossed my mind, there wasn't any girls there, any women. Again, curious as I am, there was a gap in the tent where a few tent pegs were missing, so I stuck my head under and have a look, had a look. And that's when I noticed, it probably wasn't my type of event. No. The guys were rather close to each other and um, 
yeah, a little hugging going on. Anyway, so I left the scene, went to the motel. Tony Valdez, he says to me, uh, he laughed his head off. It was a, it was a gay thing going on. At the gay MCA, at the gay MCA. Anyway, so uh, he had an imagery in his head that made him laugh for a long time of me getting stuck under this part of the tent whilst I'm looking and someone taking advantage of the British white bottom <laughs> don't worry hey I got a brick <laughs> yeah I could see his point that would have been funny not for me but there you go Wow, loads of stories to tell about America. Despite all the things that are going on in the world, all the things that are going on in America, American people are generally really, really nice people. The downside is, and I know a lot of American people are watching my channel, the downside is with you guys and girls is you tend to believe the first thing you hear without questioning it. Rather on the gullible side um, from your media. Sorry, my roads, road markings are changing. Not sure if I could change lanes. M3, no. Ah, new stretch of road. Whoa, could have made a mistake there. Maybe I have. Anyway, the battery on this phone is gonna die in a second. I don't know if it's interesting listening to someone's stories when they travel to your country. Um, I hope you find them interesting. So until the next time, look after yourself. Take care. Till my next video. All the very best. Oh, don't forget, write a comment. Thumbs up. And subscribe. <laughs> Cheers guys, thanks a lot, all the very best, bye bye, I'm going to finger the phone when the traffic eases a little so I can press stop, here we go, I'm pressing stop, oh I don't want to accelerate as I do it, let's try it, no I can't, stop it.